my name is Stéphane Legouf. I'm the CTO of, of uh, Paris Numérique, uh, department of Paris City Hall. And by the way, I'm just a little bit stressed because it's my first uh, English talk. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, who is Paris Numérique? Paris Numérique is a department attached to the direction of the communication. Its main job is to inform public through uh, the Paris.fr website, the big one, and uh, by the Street World Board. We also inform public through 70 specialized websites and mobile apps like Nuit Blanche, Paris Plage, Resident Parking, Job Research. Um, the human resource is 1,200 employees, uh, 70 for the call centers, 35 websites on audiovisual production, and five developers and two web designers. So this is not the big Paris City Road, just a little department. But we make, uh, I hope, good things. So inside the department, we made uh, two main projects. The first one is uh, the equipment. It's a list of all public places managed by Paris City Hall. There are more than 3,000 places. And we give information about parks, uh, swimming pools, museums, schools, and so on. Um, many information are about the opening hours, direction, as, and also specificities. For example, uh, for the swimming pool, we can give you the pricing and the pool lens and accessibility. By the way, the mobile application user, oh, sorry, mm, excuse me. Okay, the mobile application user of this website can uh, give us feedback about um, uh, some information, live information, like for, for example, if uh, this museum or uh, swimming is crowded or not. This is live information. Um, we've got uh, another website, which is Kefer. It's a cultural and entertainment event offered by Paris City Hall, but not only. Private company events can also be found on this website. There are more than 5,000 events daily updated uh, by a 100 contributors network. So these two main projects, six months ago, we asked me to publish all the data of this website in an open data way. But six months ago, we are not so happy because we have not available public APIs in these two projects. So I have to find two quick solutions. The first to consider was to just extract the data in CSV format. But it was not a good idea because my data says to me, don't do that, I'm a live data. I'm a live data because our data are live. Each data of these projects can be updated at any time. For example, if it starts uh, to snow, the parks are closed for security reasons. So our database is updated in this way. Our API have uh, to reflect this, inform this information in real time. So we can give to people just a daily extract file. So another solution was to just rewrite the API code part of each project. But my team said to me, boring job. Why? Because rewrite API is just for two projects, it's not creative. And do not presume good things of future because we have more projects you appraised. At this time, neither data or team dev, team dev sorry, were happy. It was time for me to cook something. And I started to create the cookbook of real-time happiness. The ingredients, in a user point of view, are the data. They have to be as possible, pure, complete, and up-to-date. Accessibility. The user has to find them quickly and documented. People have to understand sorry, how to request our data. In the dev team point of view, <laughs> C 
things have to be simply, really simply. The, the recipe has to be simple to produce. We have to follow the KISS pattern. Keep it simple, stupid. So I start to search a solution to connect public APIs directly to our own databases. And I found in the new world of how to develop something that's not good for this project. And these things become my utensil. And my utensil was a new stack, a new server stack, Mongo, Express, Angular, and AGS. Mongo is used for authentication and logs. Express, it's a really great Node.js framework used to create really quickly a Node server and AngularJS, it's a new front-end JavaScript uh, framework. Node.js was for real-time aspect and strong community around this new server-side language. Nice uh, stack. With that, I can connect to the most popular databases, watch file modification, auto-generated APIs in point, monitor APIs usage, and generate an up-to-date documentation. So I'm sorry for the bad one, but it's time to speak with the Jedi at the first. So we are going uh, deeply in the um, Make Me API, that is the engine that I will, we, we did to, uh, to give the, uh, the APIs. So, uh, sorry, just have to go back here. Uh, so, okay, this is just what happened when I start the server. Doc Watcher is launching and I'm connecting to the data source. Uh, I'm sorry, or just lose my cursor. Where are you? I come back. Um, so, this server is just configured with a um, little, uh, not the, uh, sorry, a little JSON file in which you can find some parameters for the application, the doc path where the doc will be auto generated. SSL key if you want to request via HTTPS, uh, memcache if you want to cache your data. And the main important thing is data sources. As you can see, you can connect several uh, databases like MySQL and Mongo, but you can also connect with um, Oracle, SQL Server, and everything you want. Okay. And if the server works good, uh, Really? Eh. Okay. So, just ask for a request, an endpoint, demo.api.fr, and just refresh. Okay, it works. We can make, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we can ask for other things. Uh, like something like that. Okay, this is a list of the swimming pool from the uh, equipment website. How does it work? Uh, we've got on the endpoint the version of uh, the APIs, the class, equipment the function and some parameters. The token for authentication, uh, the ID, the offset, and the limit. If I want to have more swimming pool, I can just change it. And okay, we've got the full list and with some technical information, request and version. Okay. But, there is a lot of endpoints. So how public can uh, view these endpoints? With a website 
that documented all the APIs. So this is a website. I'm sorry, it's in French, but maybe we plan to to traduce. Ah, uh, it's a little. Okay, so you've got on the left the overview how to access with your token, you have to be connected. Uh, you've got the whole list of uh, our APIs, can show it. You've got a description, the retro, the parameters, and you can play with uh, the API directly inside the ear. You can edit the parameters, here there is no parameter, just the token. And when you click OK, you have the result directly. So you can have more parameters. Uh, if you edit, the parameters will auto be generated and you can fill the form and you have already access to the documentation of each parameters. Okay, now I will try to make a really live demo because I want just to show you how it's easy to uh, create a new API. First things, just create a, a file, APJs, APJs.js, inside the model folder. Uh, in the 1.0 version, Okay, uh, just create a class, okay, with uh, the commenter, and inside, I just will add a function, the famous hello world function for the demonstration. So this function is just a little one. There is a callback here, it's just for Node.js uh, callback. So I just save it, and if I go back here on the documentation, thanks to Node.js, the documentation has just be uh, auto-generated. So happy days, the hello world, the famous hello world, you can have the return and can play with the console. And okay, it works, hello world. So we can do another one, maybe in 1.1 version, so I have to save it again. Just uh, in the 1.1, okay. Save, increase the number of the version. Oops, sorry. Okay, and the new one will just uh, say hello, oh, sorry. New one, just say hello to someone. Okay. Okay, just save it and refresh the documentation. Now we still have the happy days hello endpoint, but with the two version, v1.0, v1.1, with the new parameters. And if you try to edit parameters, there is the two arguments, and you can add any, anything you want. Just click OK. Uh, uh, this make the uh, endpoint update. And we've got hello, happy world. Okay. We are speaking about um, APIs, and uh, this means to be connected to the database. So as I show you, I've got a lot of database, so I can connect to them. For example, I just read uh, the database of speakers, and I can connect to this database, which is AD for API Days database. Just make a simple request as a SQL. And, uh, okay, it's okay, there is no param. 
just explain what uh, it is for. Just save again, go back to the documentation, refresh, and the new endpoint appears. Okay, speakers, speakers of API Days event, list of speakers. There is no parameter, just click OK. Oh, where? And you have a parser. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, it is the risk of live demo. Parser. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because it's here. Speakers. Okay, it's better. So you've got the list of, and we can do a lot of things like that very quickly. Uh, for example, this is the Kuffer, the Q2R and events, a list of APIs we give uh, to people with versioning. Uh, there is for equipment, and there is really easy today to create uh, an API directly connected to our database with an update of documentation that just parse uh, the comment inside the code. So um, this is just a demo. If you are interested by all we offer today, it's on uh, api.paris.fr. Okay, and uh, you can, for example, have the full information of uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, a swimming pool, just valid, click OK. Ah, make a mistake. Ah. Okay, and this is the wall information of the swimming pool. Okay, piscine Saint Mary. Okay, you've got uh, the opening hours for the next uh, four weeks, and if uh, for any reason the swimming pool is closed, this will update this data too. So we are really connecting to our own data. So what we give to the public is our database, really. It's not a kind of sandbox, no, it's our data. Um, so, uh, uh, the roadmap, in May we just launched a 1.0 uh, Version December we release the 2.0 version not, not, with the documentation uh, created with Angular, and in January we plan to uh, release the source code on GitHub of the uh, MakePi API engine. So thanks. Thank you, Stefan. So hands on. Do you have any questions? Uh, congratulations, it's fantastic to see you guys doing this. I was just wondering about some of the... Oh, please, please, so oh, sorry. just can you pick some more slides? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering about some of the use cases uh, for using this API. I know it's very early yet. Uh, things like uh, Paris a couple of years ago had an urban heat island effect that, kill, uh, that a lot of... Uh, older residents ended up dying prematurely because of the heat. So it seems like the um, venue, the Equip Equipment, Equipment, the first project, with Equip this, the city hall with the, um, with all of the locations of the venues. Yeah. Like that that could be used either by an external, by a healthcare provider to move 
older people to an air-conditioned um, city hall venue or something like that, or, you know, like there's some use cases around using these, uh, the API in providing better services that can even save lives. Do you, have, uh, do you know of use cases or... Ah, use cases of using of my, uh, these when? APIs? Yes, just one, uh, since uh, last week. Uh, a guy's not from Paris, Auvergne, <laughs> uh, talked to me on the, the forum, because there is a, a forum on the documentation, and asked me a lot of things, and okay, for what? These guys uh, just do the Que Faire à Paris, Windows Phone application with these APIs. Amazing, just. We, he did it. So it's on the Microsoft uh, platform store. So, okay. As we didn't have a mobile application for uh, QFR, so if people want to do the same thing for iOS and Android, okay, feel, feel free to do it. <laughs> and a lot of people will continue because this weekend we have a cut for Paris yeah, region we'll hackathon where this API will be used by, uh, we have now more than 100 uh, people registered. So yeah, it, it will be used so we will have more, more application. Uh, just I, I have maybe a question for you. You know about open data? Yeah. Because Paris region and Paris city has open, open data uh, portal. So, yeah. how, so you are on the API part, but how do you build an API on top of an open data this uh, is a, a strategy? Okay, this is a, a good question. There I is know. an open data, but for now it's only for um, um, how to say, uh, flat data, you know, it's just file. Static. And we work with uh, the portals to link the, the two. Uh, so the data we are, uh, that we have here will be linked uh, to the official open data. Um, okay. so, but it was just for make it more convenient to use, more easy to use, or just to Add more, I don't know, granularity or add more, add more, add more. service? It's, add more. it's okay. for more, more service. Okay. Okay. We have time for one last question. Oh, my question was too good. So, so thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs>